Hello, welcome back, fellow watchers of Big Sky. We have a lot to discuss. And I had a professor who once said, <laughs> always begin with the end in mind. And let's just talk about the very ending. Let's just start, so spoiler alert, we're getting straight into it, okay? My, I have a couple, and I have a couple of questions that I need y'all to answer, I need your input on. Okay, I am no engineer, but I'm pretty sure, I'm like, 85, 95% sure, you can't just drive a truck through two walls of a building. Like you can't just drive a truck through a building. You can't do that. The building's not made out of cardboard. You know, like of maybe you have, the vehicle has enough integrity to make it through the first wall, the windows, the four by fours, whatever is in the interior of the wall giving the building structure. Maybe you could make it through the first wall, but you would have to have such a momentum to make it through the wall, the furniture, and the next wall. And the fact that the, the truck just kept driving, no, you know, like, <laughs> that just doesn't track to me. Let me know what you think. I need to know, like, I, you know, I'm not, you know, it's the momentum you would need. And again, not an engineer, not a physicist, but come on, sis, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. Be honest. <laughs> and then, oh, and then I said, what about the person inside of the truck? We cannot smash through an accident like that and just keep driving along like doo 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 doo. He, it's not like when I am turning a corner and I hit a curb, which, <laughs> which occurs more than I like to, but it's not like hitting a curb. You can't just keep driving and go, ooh, you know, like, <laughs> You can't just keep going. Wouldn't I get whiplash? Wouldn't you get whiplash? Wouldn't you get a concussion? That person would have been crashed. Let's say that they went through on this mission. They would have crashed to the other side and they would have had to have just like crashed and stopped and passed out. There's no way that they're just like doo -doo -doo -doo, and kept driving. No way. No way, dude. I can't even. But let's, let's, let's move on. Let's talk about who do we think is driving? Now, it seems almost obvious, like, who is driving. I think that obviously, the most obvious answer would be John Wayne made his crazy brother Rand get behind the wheel and do a suicide truck mission. That, and Rand is crazy enough to do it. That's something I believe would happen. Um, But they kind of make you confused a little. And this is why this this show is so hit or miss i don't know if they did this on purpose to be vague but is it supposed to look like is that ronald driving through i'm pretty sure it's not ronald and also how would ronald know where they were staying i so it's not Ron. i don't think it's ronald i think it's probably one of the it has to be one of the brothers or somebody working for the sheriff or somebody we already know who sent them we already know who sent them and why they were there whether or not it's the specific person we think it is anyway um, and then the next thing is, talking about the ending, who do we think is in that freezer? Who is in the freezer and who do you think put them there? And I'm going to, I'm going to get to my answer to that particular question when we get down to the answer of Ronald and his mess. Let's start though with Rosie. The Rosie is the girl who Blake attacked, allegedly, who he was charged with attacking and her dad. They did the whole scared, small town, we can't tell all the small town secrets or we'll get in trouble with the big villains of the small town. They did that whole song and dance, tap dance of like, oh, it, we're in a small town and there's an evil person and we can't say anything. You don't know how things work around here. You know, like, goodbye. Goodbye! I'm just, <laughs> I'm done. I'm like, okay, whatever. Oh, whatever, Rosie and her dad. They they, they didn't bring very much to the episode. Um, no shade, but they did it. Uh, and then the Klein Sassers. Let me start calling them by their name. The Klein... Call me by your name. Okay, sorry. The Klein Sassers. And apparently their ranch is the Iron Cross Ranch. Interesting. So Blake fell. Cheyenne really threw her brother's body off the side of a cliff. First of all, I'm not fully convinced that he was dead last episode, especially when I, they played it again at the beginning of this episode. He mostly got hit in the face. He probably could have survived that because he just, he hit him, he popped him over the head. I understand he could have been dead, but 
a part of me feels like he could have been knocked out. Now that would be an interesting twist. I don't have faith that this show would bring that back up to make it like an interesting twist that you see a flashback and Cheyenne is looking at him and he's starting to wake up. I don't believe that they would bring back something like that, but we'll see if they do. Um, so he falls off a cliff. Everybody's grieving. The mom, <laughs> this is why I say the show is kind of funny. The mom was funny. She was just slapping everybody. She's like, no, no, <laughs> he didn't commit suicide. <laughs> she had to get her licks in. She's like, I can only pull the grieving um, crazy widow. <laughs> crazy not widow i can only play the grieving crazy bomb for a couple of minutes and i'm gonna get my licks in she slapped everybody <laughs> don't say suicide he wouldn't do that anyway let's move on to cheyenne now let me take credit where credit is due give me my credit because what did i say i said last week she's gonna have two options she's either going to tell cassie and jenny or she's going to use the death of Blake as a bargaining chip to get in good with her brothers. And we were rooting for you, Cheyenne. You chose the wrong choice. Now you have to be labeled along with your whole, with your little, someone called them the MAGA family, the MAGA Duck Dynasty family. You got to be labeled as a pure villain right along with your little MAGA family. We can't even root for you anymore to rebel. I, when she's having her little sassy moments, I'm like, okay, sis, you betrayed your brother. You're the only brother that was defending you, girl. You threw his body off a cliff. I'm still not super convinced that he was fully dead. She threw her brother off a cliff. The only one that was at the dinner table, the breakfast table, like, leave her alone. You know, pff, goodbye. Goodbye. But um, let's move on. Cassie and Jenny. Now, they had some emotional moments throughout this episode. Cassie and Jenny kind of commiserated over missing Cody and that grief. <clears throat> they both have dead husbands. They're both widows now. Widows! Widows Club. Um, <laughs> if you watch American Dad, you know what I'm talking about. Widows! Anyway. <laughs> so, Cassie and Jenny were commiserating over that. I was like, okay, I see that. I see the little emotions coming into play. And then Cassie and the dude detective guy were talking about you know, his sister got kidnapped. God bless him. I know it's very sad and difficult. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but let's move on to the meat and potatoes, okay? Those little emotional moments, they were, they were cute or whatever. But let's talk about the truth. Ronald and his crazy ass girlfriend, she's officially crazy. In my mind, she's officially season two of you on Netflix, Dove Crazy. Because wasn't Dove the crazy one? Dove was crazy. Um... Now, when Ronald says this, this is what pissed me off. This is what pissed me off. Because this is the most ridiculous dialogue I've ever heard on TV. Hey, let's take a selfie together. My mom always said, when three people are photographed, the one in the middle dies. And he positioned her in the middle. Give me a break. Now, this is where I get mad. Because... He says, you're going to die, bitch. And what do you do when you see some, when he knocked on your door, he would have been, he would have been outside knocking all day. Cause I would have been looking straight at my window. Like I'm not opening the damn door. Do I look like a dumbass to you, Ronald? No. Cause you're missing with the wrong one. I watch the news and I watch true crime. I know you're a freaking murderer. Why would she open the door for him? Even a crack. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't... Not only that, I would get to the back of my house. I would go to the police. I, no way. No way. No way. I would not have opened the door. And then, why did she call Cassie and Jenny's detective agency? That actually doesn't make sense. Even if they were listed as, like, if you have information, call one of these numbers. No. My first thing would be, I'm calling 911. <laughs> or I'm calling the local police and I'm telling them I would I would be driving behind him I'd be like this is his license plate of his car this is where he was last seen at my sister's address no way girl and then the gr and then so he comes in and kills her obviously duh he said he was gonna kill you like this 
<laughs> it's so dumb. Like, I couldn't even feel bad with her. And then, what about even before? Let's go backwards. So you think that someone is a killer dating your sister. Do you sit down calmly with her and have a conversation? Or do you immediately start being like, look, look, look at this picture and look at him. Look at this picture and then look at Ronald. No, you, 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 you would be blurting it out. You would be showing evidence. You wouldn't be sitting calmly like, I just think some, he's, something is off. Or texting, I don't think he's who he says he is. I'm like, why would you text that? Why would you text it? And, and honestly, if my sister was acting like that, and see, this is what everybody's built different, I wouldn't even say shit to her. I would call the freaking police. I would lock my door and I'd be like, you know, you're good, Ronald. Ronald will show up to my door. I'd be like, no, you're good. Go have my sister. You can kill her. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't. I would be trying to save her. I... <laughs> no, I feel bad for saying that. No. Girl, but the girlfriend... And then let's go back even further. The girlfriend let Ronald drive around with her daughter in the back seat without her. I'm just like, no way. This, that's how you know she's reckless because you would not leave your baby daughter, your little girl in the seat, in the back seat with a grown man you just met a couple weeks ago. You would never do that. In these day, in this day and age, girl, Look at Chris Watts. He killed his own two daughters. So you're you're going to trust a strange man. But let's go back to the body in the freezer. Because <laughs> all of this has a context, does it not? So crazy girl is not worried about her daughter because she's crazy. She's like, oh, yeah, let something happen to my daughter. I'm, I'm looking for an excuse to kill again. <laughs> they obviously, either the sister killed Steve. I, it's obviously Steve, right, in the freezer. Steve is the baby daddy of the little blonde girl. Um, it's obviously Steve and either the girlfriend herself killed, I, I need to remember these names. Either the girlfriend killed Steve or the sis, the girlfriend's sister killed Steve. I'm distracted by the windows open. This, <laughs> and they hid it in the sister's basement um, freezer. Now, there's another option. Maybe the sister didn't even know. Maybe she snuck the body in there and didn't even know. But I think that she probably knew. Because why wouldn't it be at her house? Why wouldn't, th that's another thing. Why wouldn't the blonde girlfriend just have it at her house? Why would the body be in the sister's basement? I don't know. Who knows? And I want to say thank you to Angela for volunteering to spill tea. Um... Blah, blah, blah. The girlfriend's crazy like I told you. She's like Dove, right? From season two of you. She's the crazy one. She's like, I'm going to kill for you. <laughs> Who else can say that? She's like a little Amy from Gone Girl. She's cray cray. You could tell, you could look in her eyes. Um, and then when Angela, let's just end on this note. Angela says to Jenny, moments before the truck drives through, Jenny, we... Can you protect me? I'm like, girl, she's a private detective. She doesn't have officers working for her. She doesn't have the FBI really at her disposal like that, like that. She cannot protect you. Obviously, she can't protect you from shit. That's obviously. But uh, that's why, are they dead? I think that's the next question. Are they dead? I, no, Jenny's not dead. They did not kill Jenny off. They had them jump to the side. You know, people selectively survive shit in the show. And I think that they sec selectively let Jenny live. I really don't think, <laughs> no. Do you hear my neighbors? <laughs> Do you hear my neighbor? <laughs> I hope y'all pick that up. He's not that loud. <laughs> Do you like my plants as well? <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm finished. Oh, he went inside. <laughs> and these are my plants. They're called purple shamrocks. I love them. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm right at 15 minutes. Good for me. Leave a plant emoji if you got all the way to the end. <laughs> 